it's Sleep the Brain Performance Center. How many of you out there have a problem falling asleep or staying asleep? People today sleep 20% less than they did 100 years ago. One in three of us will have some form of insomnia during our lifetime. About 50% of adults experience loss of sleep due to stress or anxiety. 90% of the people that are depressed also experience insomnia. There's a clear link between sleep and good mental health. Chronic sleep loss takes away the pleasure that we experience in life, and that's associated with depression. People that have a hard time falling asleep, they get in bed and they start feeling anxious that they're not going to sleep. The more anxious you get, the more you can increase the potential for being depressed. Did you know that there are approximately 10 million people in the United States that are using prescribed sleep aids? And I would guess, and it is a guess, that there's probably another 2 million out there that are trying to figure it out on their own. They're using over-the-counter products or they're using different herbal solutions. Hopefully some are practicing meditation or mindfulness because those will certainly calm the brain down. But I saw some research on insomnia, and it, 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 it suggested that the cognitive approach and the neurocognitive approach is very powerful. There is clearly a link between hyperarousal in the, in the brain and insomnia. When people have insomnia and they be, begin to think about it, they just become convinced, I'm never going to go to sleep. I, you know, I'm probably going to sleep two hours. We have all these te this technology that we use to help us track our sleep. And sometimes I think that makes us more nervous than not. What we have found is what we do in bed impacts our sleep. How many of you read in bed, watch TV, play video games, do your schoolwork, actually do some of your professional work from bed? We know that if we nap during the day or if we drink caffeine late in the day, that will, that will upset our sleep pattern. But what we've learned is the things that we do in bed that are not sleep or sex, that creates a negative link between the bed and sleep. And the more you do these things, that link gets stronger and stronger and stronger. The good news is, since that link is learned, it can be unlearned. And that's where cognitive behavioral therapy, stimulus control, can help you. Sometimes we all feel that we have, we have to do something about our sleep. And the more we think about it, the more fearful we get. And we need to understand that the only time that we stay, can go to sleep, is when we're in bed. How many of you are falling asleep on the couch with the TV on? You're reinforcing that negative link that sleep and the bed don't go hand in hand. But cognitive behavioral therapy, stimulus control therapy can help you with this. When you ask yourself, what are the negative patterns that are associated with your sleep? And if, if you are still not sure of that, we can help you figure that out. Over time, the link can be changed and the link between sleep and bed becomes stronger and stronger. And the bed can become a cue. Oh, I'm in bed. It's time to go to sleep. A lot of times you can put in place a ritual around your sleep. For instance, if I take a hot bath, my body knows it's time to go to sleep, whether it's seven o'clock at night or three o'clock in the morning. Sleep plays an important role. It's the foundation for your body and your brain. And research shows us that people that can increase their sleep will have less depression, less anxiety. Sleep is one, probably the most important thing that we can do to retrieve our body and our brain. If you're having trouble with sleep, if you're so stuck in those negative activities that increase that link between the negative link that bed and sleep don't go together, call us. I'd love to help you figure that out. I'd love to help you sleep better and improve your overall quality of life.